So you're probably wondering, how can I write clean senior CSS code? And how can I avoid junior CSS mistakes to write cleaner, simpler, and maintainable code? So we all know that CSS is hard, has a lot of properties, a lot of stuff, and it has changed and updated throughout the past couple of years, many, many times, and brand new stuff, and stuff got deprecated, and new stuff got introduced, and so on and so forth. So what are the junior mistakes that you should avoid to be better CSS developer? So the first mistake is using absolute size in CSS. If you haven't already seen a topic around the internet, Twitter, or somewhere else about what whether to use EM versus REM, or maybe like I want to do, oh, I don't know, should I use pixel versus REM? Have you ever wondered why people are actually recommending us to use REM as CSS developers absolute size, which is pixels? So this answer on Stack Overflow actually sums it all. It's a really good answer and it's very fruitful and it's very concise and it has like all the brief information that you would need to be convinced to move from pixels to REM. But for the straightforward TLDR answer is you need to use use REM instead of pixel. You won't regret it. It's going to be way much better for you in the upcoming feature. So if you take a look on the MDN documentation in here about what is REM in here, it tells us that this is the font size of the root element. And it's actually going to give it a relative. And here EM is actually the font size of the parents. But instead of using the font size of the parents, we use the font size of the root element. So in order to see how this is better visualized, like move from pixels to REM and why REM is way much better. So for example, we've got this pretty simple page in here that is like a blog post where you got a title, you got a banner image in here about this article, and you got, you know, the contents of the article in here, like the paragraph. Everything looks pretty good because this is actually a big screen. So we got like a, you know, canvas to work with, and I got a lot of pixels to work with. So this is working fine. And if you look into like what all the styles we have in here, excuse me, I have like, for example, this title. So if this makes no sense for you, for example, we got style, this is, you can take this as a simple CSS. All I'm doing in here is just using the style component to put that into React. So if you're not familiar with this one, this is still going to be valid for you as a valid CSS. So everything you see inside of this here is just like a normal CSS you're putting inside of a class. For example, we got a title here. Excuse me, I said the font size using pixel. Font size equals 60 pixel. And if you go to the paragraph, I'm doing the same thing. So I'm doing font size equals 33 pixels with a line height as well. So it's cursing here, I'm using absolute sizing and absolute font sizing in here, particularly of like pixels and I'm not using REM. So for this one, if we try to do some responsiveness and try to resize the canvas or trying to resize the window I'm working with or the browser. As Chris said, the title actually doesn't fit. It makes like, you know, it looks like it doesn't fit in here and it's still huge and gigantic for something like a small, like a, you know, a mobile device. And if you look like, for example, into the content in here, excuse me, the content is way much bigger than the banner and they're like crashing it and they're just actually resizing when we resize the window. So there's like no responsiveness whatsoever. So in that case, what you need to do is actually go to like do, oh, media query, I need to want to set a media query, I want to just copy the font size, and I go through, oh, I want to resize the font size every single time, and so on and so forth. But for REM, it can actually save the day for you, and it can just all this rubbishness from your code and make it super easy. Now, for using REM, you need to go to the roots, and in exclusive, I'm doing global styles, which means I'm putting like a roots. You can use the same thing as an HTML or a body. So I can do like HTML in here or a body. But for the roots or the column roots in here, it's actually the roots elements that represents like, you know, how it works in HTML. So I'm sending the font size or the root font size to be 16 pixels. And here I'm using pixels because this is where actually you set the root size or the root font size for all the other elements to inherit from. I don't recommend you play around with this one. Just leave it 16 pixels. It's way much better. Now what I'm doing in here, I'm doing media queries. So every single time I got like, oh, I go into a tablet or a laptop that is that has like a smaller screen and go to the font size and make the font size smaller. And that is basically like for a tablet, a mobile and so on and so forth. And now if I switch to REM, so I'm can comment this out. For example, we do font size 2.5 REM and one REM equals one unit of the font size, which means one REM equals 16 pixels. So CSS and the browser is going to do the calculations for us automatically depending on the root. So I'm going to do the same thing in here for the paragraphs. I'm going to go to font size. I can comment out this pixels. I don't want. Now, if I go back and I try to resize, as Chris in here, when I resize the text and the title I should resize is with, as Chris now, I'm like on a mobile 
thumbnail or something, I can zoom in and it's still pretty readable because that's what a mobile screen would look like. Everything resizes when it just go down and it looks pretty good. The second mistake is not using the not pseudo class. So if you're not familiar with the not pseudo class, it's actually a CSS that allows you to do a negation on a specific selector and actually it only selects the opposite of that selector. So for example, let's say we got these icons in here. For example, you're just doing a website, you want to show your socials and you just like have some icons or anything else that is aligned. So let's take a look into this scenario where, for example, you've got like a set of icons or something and you want to display the border. So the border right in here, I'm setting the border right on every single icon. So I'm doing the border right in here, clear C, but the last icon, it always has an issue because it always does the border right. It doesn't know if it's last or not. You know, it just like adds the border right. And it doesn't make sense. The style looks or the design in here and the layout doesn't make any sense. So how can we remove that or how we usually remove that in CSS? So we use something like this. For example, doing here, as I said before, the border right and two pixels sort of gray. So to remove that, I go ahead and use the last child selector. So I do a last child. I'm just using that one. I'm just saying it's pretty much the same thing. I'm doing an end in here. This is because I'm, I'm just like using style components and everything. But this would be the same as doing like, for example, icon and doing just like last child of icon, something like this. And here I'm just resetting them, just doing border right equals none. So this is the old ugly way where you have to set the border first, then unset or reset the border later on for the last child only. And that still actually works. It just removes the border right and everything. That's good. But the code is actually too foggy. And especially this is actually a simple example, but imagine you have a lot of properties that you need to reset and you go through. It makes the code duplicated. It makes it super hard to read and go through and especially to maintain in the future. Now, using the not pseudo class in here, it comes in and rescues the day for us. So you can do not, I'm doing the last child. So I'm just doing not the last child. So I'm going to apply this border right to every but the last child. So I'm just doing not last child in here. I'm just giving it two pixels solid gray. Go back in here. There you go. That works the same thing. But now the code is a little bit more simpler as it was before. Just type in a single line of code. So yes, it makes a lot more sense, right? The third mistake is not knowing and not using the CSS reset on your project. So the goal of the CSS reset is actually to reduce the browser inconsistencies, things standardized across all browsers. So for example, if you have go to like Chrome, Safari and Firefox, they have a slight changes in style and CSS where sometimes like a browser displays the button in a little bit gray and the other one just does margin on top, the other one doesn't and so on and so forth. I mean, nowadays in like 2023 and beyond, there is way much less inconsistencies than it was before. This article has been released in 2007. You can clearly see like how long that was and how outdated that is. So there's actually the style sheet that you can copy and actually use, but I don't really recommend that. There's actually a very, very old one and most browsers actually have changed and you need to adopt. Now, the modern one is actually from Josh. So you can go, you can see his blog here and it has like a really amazing blog. So the CSS reset for this one, he actually provides his own CSS reset. It uses across browsers and across different projects that he works with. And I absolutely agree with his reset in here and the style sheet he's providing. There's actually the style sheet. So it just makes some stuff standardized, like the before, after, like box sizing. He just sends the box sizing for every single element. He does zero margin for everything, like for all elements, heights of 100% for HTML body. He just like resets everything and just puts everything to the ground and makes everything kind of shared and vanilla for all the browsers. So simply in here to use that one, just put that inside of CSS, just copy paste that one. This is the reset I said before. It's pretty simple. It doesn't have a lot of stuff because browsers now are more of like a unified and they all agree in the same style and the same kind of predefined CSS styles across all the browsers. Actually, I really recommend just going and putting that out in a CSS reset CSS file in here. And you can go into your inside of your CSS file, for example, the index CSS in here, whatever, and make sure to import that one on top. And everything you're going to put afterward is just going to overwrite that reset so you can apply your style. The fourth mistake is not using Tailwind CSS in 2023 and beyond. If you've never used Tailwind CSS before, you may think this tip is kind of silly. But country-wise, it's really important. Tailwind CSS is a beast. And whether you like it or not, Tailwind CSS is actually dominating the CSS word and it's making lives of developers like me and you way much easier. Plus, it's improving the developer experience and how our UI is robust and easy to create. So for example, something like HTML, where you got like a bunch of classes combined together and all of these classes actually predefined using Tailwind CSS, it can make things look something like this. As you can see, this design has been created in all of this using this one without putting a single line in the standard vanilla CSS. Many companies, teams, and literally everyone is going nuts about Tailwind CSS lately and they just sharing why they use Tailwind CSS. They migrated from the vanilla CSS and all that cool 
cool stuff. So for example, to give you a better point of view of why Tailwind is actually such a really powerful tool. So for example, let's take this landing page that I created using Tailwind CSS. So for example, it's creating you got some iPhone kind of picture that looks really nice and got some really cool text on top in here. Enter your email, join the wait list. And we've got a cool footer as well in here. All of them have been created using Tailwind CSS. So this is actually what it looks like right now using Tailwind CSS creating here. For example, I want a full width. I do minimum full. I want a background white. I just do background white. And if you hover over it, if you're using VS Code, it just tells you exactly what this is in vanilla CSS, like a background color. It just tells you exactly what's going on. And a bunch of bunch of stuff. Excuse me, all these class names are Tailwind predefined class names. They can create your UIs way much easier and super simple. So if you compare this one, the Tailwind CSS version, to something vanilla CSS and how it would look like vanilla standard CSS. So in standard CSS, this is actually what you would do. So you just create a class. Every single time you're going to do, oh, minimum width, 100%. Do content. You're going to go through all the contents. For example, let's take this, for example, where you got a title in here. So excuse me, in a vanilla CSS, I need to go through margin top. I set the margin, font size, REM. I need to figure out all of those. But in the contrary, if you go back to our Tailwind CSS and you go to my title, you're going to see this is the H1. This is the title. The class name in here, all of these class names actually make it super easy to read. For example, margin top. I'm going to give it a margin top four. It's going to be one REM. The best option of them all actually allows you to do responsive design right into your Tailwind or right into your classes without writing media queries. So for example, this SM in here is going to do, oh, this is going to be a media query that's going to only apply the text 6L when the minimum width is actually 640. It's curious in here. And this is actually going to apply I like font size and line heights and, and everything from that. It makes things super easy. And again, if you compare this to the actual CSS where I have my media queries in here, for example, the title, I need to do all this like minimum width. I need to do media queries. I need to add the media queries. And the last mistake in here is actually not properly using the image aspect ratio. So for instance, if you take, for example, these products, we were got like a bunch of or like, you know, a couple of images of products that are lined up. So if you focus a little bit on these images, they look fine, right? No, you're wrong. If you just focus on the images, if I can zoom in the here for you, I screw in here, for example, this image, the iPhone in here, and the whole image is kind of like stretched. So let's say, for example, this image has an aspect ratio of 16 by nine, where this image actually is, is stretched out, it doesn't fit that aspect ratio, it doesn't respect or maintain that aspect ratio. And that makes the image look super horrible. And it just doesn't look like you know, the real image that we want to see. So how can you actually display images in the real aspect ratio and tell CSS, Oh, I want to make respect the aspect ratio and make sure that it actually does work fine. So there's actually a cool property CS property called the object fit that allows you to do that for images and videos. And if you are wondering what is the kind I use for this one? Yes, it's actually available across all the browsers since like 2015, most of them. So yeah, so you're pretty much aware that Oh, should be good enough. Obviously, this isn't guaranteed for IE or Internet Explorer. So for example, as you can see, this is actually our image, I'm saying width to be 16 REM or something, but I'm not using the object fit. So if I do object fit and set it particularly to cover, so cover will make it respect the aspect ratio, and it will clip anything that goes outside the aspect ratio out of the view of that image. So if I go back in here, as you can see, it looks like a little bit more zoomed in sort of image, but it's way much better now because it respects the aspect ratio and it tells us, oh, this is Oppo, as you can see, like for this image too. So what you want to do is actually increase the width in here. For example, you can make this oh 25 REM. If they go back, squeezing it starts getting way much better and starts like you know getting most of the details that are happening. If you increase this one a little bit more, yes, it's gonna look way much better. Excuse me now, I'm getting the image in the real aspect ratio. I'm not getting any clipped off kind of details of the of the image or something, and everything looks super good. Anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys liked the video. If you want more videos like this, let me know. Catch you all hopefully in the next ones.